Welcome to this week's Today's Health and Wellness Podcast. This is Brett. And I'm Ashley. The Today's Health and Wellness Podcast is a joint effort of the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. In each week's podcast, we spotlight health and wellness stories you'll find in the magazine, on Today's Health webpages and social media, as well as extras you'll only hear in the weekly podcasts. Thanks for subscribing and hitting the play button. Let's get started. If anyone in your family has hearing problems, they've probably asked, what's the difference between an audiologist, a hearing aid dealer, and a hearing aid dispenser? Well, through the years, there's been a lot of consumer confusion and controversy over those names and professional roles in diagnosing and treating hearing loss, and it could add up to a lot of money. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's still some confusion today, especially since so many changes have taken place in the hearing loss field. October is National Audiology Awareness Month, and we thought we'd find out from the source what the differences are between an audiologist, a hearing aid dealer, and hearing aid dispenser. Ann Wheat, Doctor of Audiology at Columbus Speech and Hearing, spoke with us about this. What is an audiologist? An audiologist, um, currently to be licensed in the state of Ohio, um, is a master's or doctoral level degree. We're trained in the diagnosis and rehabilitation and treatment of hearing loss. So we are really, for a lot of people, that entry point into this world of hearing loss. We get referrals from family members who say, dad can't hear at the table anymore. Or we get referrals from physicians when patients go in for their annual health checks and they get a hearing screening or they say, you know, I'm having trouble at the movies. Um, We get self-referrals. So audiologists are really the primary person for dealing, for helping individuals deal with their hearing loss. Um, A hearing aid specialist, which is the other Um, designator that patients will frequently hear, or audio prostologist, Um, those individuals um, in the state of Ohio only need a high school diploma and um, references and um, medical checkup that says they're free of of diseases. (laughs) And they really are in the business to sell a hearing aid. Um, the testing that they do is di- is not diagnostic testing. It is testing simply to say there's a hearing loss and you would benefit from a hearing aid or your hearing's normal. Um, when you come to see an audiologist, we are looking at you as an entire person. Um, we're looking at very specifically what are your communication concerns? What are health issues that might be impacting your hearing, or how you function um, in your day-to-day life. So it's not just about, do you have a hearing loss? It really is looking at the entire scope of a patient's life. Um, We refer to ear, nose, and throat physicians um, when we feel it is appropriate. But about 75% of individuals with hearing loss have no medical um, contraindications to hearing aids. So a large portion of the patients that we see, their hearing loss is there for whatever reason, and it can't be medically fixed. So as I said, we will pull in a medical professional if we feel it's necessary. Uh, What are some signs that you may have a hearing loss? Well, I think the the obvious ones that we so often hear about are grandpa says, huh, 50 times a day. Um, he can't hear the grandkids. Um, I talk to him on the phone and he needs me to repeat all the time. I walk into the house and the TV is blasting. Those are, I think, the very obvious signs of hearing loss, but there are also pretty subtle um, signs of hearing loss. I'm really tired at the end of the day, and I'm not, why am I so tired at the end of the day? Um, I'm straining in a meeting. Um, 
we work with foreign companies, and I cannot understand the um, the people from from Israel that we're working with. Their accents are so thick. Um, I do fine when it's quiet, but I get into a restaurant, and if I'm not sitting in exactly that right spot, I'm like not really sure, or I'm leaning over to my friend or my significant other and saying, what did they say? Um, I'm not really sure. And so hearing loss is often spoke of as kind of that invisible um, handicap, if you will. Um, You know, I need glasses because I can't read text as well as I used to. And so it's pretty obvious when somebody sees me with my glasses on, they know, oh, but hearing aids can be so discreet now that I know what I'm looking for and I frequently don't see a hearing aid on on someone. And so you don't know it's hearing loss. And so you think, why don't they just pay attention? If they pay attention things would be fine. Or it's selective hearing. We hear that a lot when spouses bring in their significant others. Well, she just has selective hearing. There are obviously those those very kind of in-your-face, if you will, signs of hearing loss. But there are also some signs that are very, very subtle. And we also know that certain disease processes can have hearing loss as a side effect. For instance, diabetes um, is a known cause for hearing loss, especially if you are in an uncontrolled state with your diabetes. And so um, when we see patients with certain health conditions, um, we're always really paying very close attention to how is that health condition being treated because that can have a direct effect on what's happening with their hearing. Is hearing loss also genetic? It absolutely can be. Um, Babies are tested at birth um, in the hospital before they leave. And because hearing loss is the number one birth defect, if I don't like the word defect, but it's the number one birth defect. Mm -hmm. And so hearing loss absolutely can be genetic. It can be for a very unknown reason. Um, So when we see hearing loss in kids, we're always looking for what else may be going on with that child. Um, We can have genetic hearing losses as adults. So we're growing up, our hearing loss is fine. We hit 25 and all of a sudden we start to see progression. And when you look back at history, that's the way Uncle Joe and Grandpa and Great Grandpa all lost their hearing. And so diagnosis of hearing loss is not just, yeah, you've got a hearing loss, you need a hearing aid. As I said earlier, it's really looking at all those factors um, because that helps us make a plan of treatment for the patient. One of the first things I think that people think about is hearing loss with age. Um, a lot of the symptoms that I mentioned earlier, the TV's up loud. You know, grandpa's saying, huh, a lot. We almost expect to see that with age. And that certainly can and is a primary contributor to hearing loss. As I said, other disease processes um, can affect hearing. Medications can affect hearing. Lifestyle choices, such as I love to go to rock concerts and refuse to wear hearing protection, or I work in a noisy environment and I sometimes wear my hearing protection and and sometimes I don't. Um, I read just yesterday that one in five millennials are already showing some signs of hearing loss. And so we're talking about, you know, individuals in their early 20s to late 20s who are already showing signs of hearing loss, and it appears to be directly related to noise exposure. You know, we don't live on the farm anymore um, where, you know, horses pulled the tractor or the plow. 
We live in a very, very noisy world. We get noise from our cars. I hear kids and, and adults sometimes blasting their stereos outside, and I think that person's going to be coming to see me in five years. Um, so there are lots of reasons for hearing loss. Some that can be medically treated and others that are unfortunately a, a permanent loss. What are some ways to protect your hearing that are very simple, inexpensive, uh, and just common ways to do it? Well, certainly limiting your exposure to loud noise. Um, if you like to go to loud concerts, get a set of disposable earplugs. You can walk into pretty much any drugstore and, and find them. Um, step away. Step outside of the venue. You know, go out into, you know, the hallway. Let your ears rest a little bit. Um, limit how long you're listening to music on your um on your smartphone or iPad or iPod. Um, there are ways to set the limits of volume within those devices. And I would encourage parents to do that with their kids so that they go in and say, we're never going to let the, the device exceed this volume and then teach the kids that they can't go more than about 60% of that volume. And then you know you're safe. So those are really very kind of simple ways. When you mow the lawn, wear hearing protection. Um, again, the the little foam plugs in the ears, or there are ear muffs that can be purchased at sporting goods stores that aren't that expensive. We know that the more you're around noise and the louder the noise, the greater the risk of your hearing. If you walk out of a noisy bar or a concert and your ears are ringing, your ears are saying, that's too much. I've had too much. And so those are the kinds of things that you can pay attention to. Be prepared the next time you walk into, you know, that kind of an environment. I think, unfortunately, there's a stigma associated with hearing loss. You know, people don't want to be seen with something, you know, bright yellow stuck in their ears. Um, it's bright yellow stuck in your ears now, or it's a hearing aid 15, 20 years down the road. You know, we talk about preventative maintenance for all kinds of health things, diabetes, heart disease, cholesterol. You know, there are things that we can do to prevent those or at least reduce our risk. But the same is true for hearing. There are pretty simple, inexpensive ways to minimize our risk. Thanks again for listening to this month's Today's Health and Wellness podcast, brought to you by Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health on Facebook, theblitz.com, 1039jackfm.com, and wmni.com. Contact us if you have a health and wellness segment you would like us to cover. If you would like to talk about sponsoring our podcast, our contact information is on the podcast notes. We look forward to hearing from you. Circle270media.com.